My science is better than your science. Your science is shit. Your science is fucking epidemiology and mine's fucking randomized controlled trials. Your science is bullshit. All of the science. I science, 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 science. You know, the evolution of my journey over the past three years, it, it, it came from only one thing, and that is my willingness to question what I am doing. My willingness to try <clears throat> different shit, not to just listen to somebody like me, or anybody else for that matter, not to listen to one voice and do what that one person says. I've encouraged you all constantly to go out, you know, and research and submit the articles to me to, to help me question. Because you, you guys ask lots of brilliant questions, some of which have sent me down entirely new paradigms. Um, as in my current paradigm versus, you know, organic versus GMO versus glyphosate versus glyphosate. But every once in a while during my research process... And we're going to go over how I, I've learned the things I've learned and, and where it's gotten me today and where I'm going from here. Um, I come across some very, very hyper-focused people that know a lot about one little piece of the puzzle. Remember that little fucking puzzle metaphor? Well, it ain't going anywhere for a while. I'm obsessed with it because it's kind of a nice philosophy to do this research, to, to do this journey. You know... But a lot of us, we find that piece that fits in the puzzle, right? And then that becomes the picture. We, like, get a magnifying glass, and we hold that motherfucker over that little piece of the puzzle, and we're like, this is it! Well, yes! My name's Dr. Gregor! I found this one little piece of the puzzle, so I'm gonna ignore the rest of the fucking picture! Sorry. Veins pop out of my head when I talk about Dr. Gregor. I don't know what it is about him. It's just, it's not even just him. There's people on all sides that act like him. But, um, you know, it's, it's a danger that we can get into. We find the one little piece that works. So that becomes the entire picture for us. We don't have all the pieces, and we probably never will have enough pieces to figure out what the big fucking picture is. Um, especially when you got people crowbarring these fucked up pieces into the spot where they don't quite fit, but we're gonna, God damn it, that's going in there with this fucking hammer. So my, the evolution of this process for me started much like many of you have probably started, and that's you find the guy that's ripped, that has his shirt off in every fucking video that's going, this is what you gotta do to look like me. So you go and do that for a while, and I did this a long time ago. Eat less, move more, eat whole foods, count your calories. I did all of that. Got all the way down to the 190s back then, too. Then I was starving. I was miserable. I couldn't sustain it. Um, I couldn't even exercise as often. You know, I had a lot going on back then that ate into quite a bit of time. Um, plus, I would work 12 hours sometimes at, at the job I was at at the time. And, you know... <laughs> There was just so much keeping me from from sticking with what we've been told for the past 40 years. And I knew that like every day that I didn't work out 
I gained weight. Um, I was not f- satisfied with what I was eating at all. I was hungry all the time. Um, my energy levels were shit. So, but back then, I was just looking at the one guy that told me this is what I had to fucking do, and then I could see some fucking ab action and shit. And then when I started three years ago, I, I kind of did the same thing. I'm like, okay, well, I need to do something. So I started the eat less, move more, and very quickly fell into that ravenously hungry, low energy when I'm not exercising. If I didn't make it to the gym, I fucking gained weight. Um, I ran into all of that. And then I stumbled on intermittent fasting. You know, And then I thought I had the holy grail there. For a good year, I was like, holy shit, I just lost 50 fucking pounds. Intermittent fasting is the way. It is the only way. You can eat Pop-Tarts all fucking day as long as you fast. Then I hit a wall of hunger, of misery. My fatty liver did nothing. My belly measurement didn't move. And my weight loss stalled. And I was like, well, well, fuck. But because I had known from intermittent fasting and stepping outside of what everyone tells us to fucking eat, and if you're not eating, you're starving. I stepped outside that box. I did something that society as a whole, on almost every fucking level, was telling me not to do. You got to eat every day. You got to eat several times a day. You got to eat six small meals. I jumped away from that and lost 50 pounds, regardless of whether or not I went to the gym. I started out going to the gym, and I quickly learned that all that did was make me hungrier. So that when I did eat, when I wasn't fasting, I was eating a lot more. And even then, I wasn't, you know, I'd only be full for a certain amount of time, maybe an hour or two before I was hungry again. Um, and, and then I started to learn about hormones. And, and the reason I've been able to come to where I am today, at my goal, healthy, happy, for the most part, you know, nothing's perfect. I came here by questioning and stepping outside the box. And continuing to learn, never stopping learning, even if it's shit I already know, there's always that little bit of difference in the puzzle piece. So I'm, I, I'm looking at a lot of things outside the realm of just losing weight, of just getting healthy at this point, and I'm looking at some of the root causes of our problems. I'm looking more into some diseases and and things that, you know, are kind of that I've never had a problem with that a lot of people have a problem with. And, you know, it's, I've been kind of pulled into that. I get asked questions sometimes for diseases that I have very little knowledge in or very little research in. But it encourages me to, to kind of look into those things here and there. Um, and, and I love that. I love learning beyond my own personal opinion on what is healthy and what is not healthy. And the other component is self-experimentation and elimination. Um, It turns out science is fucked, all right? You know, nowadays when I'm reading studies, there is so much I have to question as far as bias, as far as who's funded the study, as far as is this study just there to prove or confirm whatever that person that led the study wants to believe and that if it didn't do that, we probably wouldn't hear about it or see it. Um, It's basically self cherry picking or self bias or confirmation bias. Um, And nowadays, A lot of these industries, whom I blame for our health problems, they know we're looking at science. They know we're reading all of these studies. So what's their solution? Well, we got to hit them with more studies. We got to be more science-y and shit. Everybody wants scientific studies to to tell that our our shit's okay, so we're going to go ahead and do those. We're going to ghostwrite. And then hire a motherfucker known independent scientist to stamp their name on that ghost study and pass it off to the nearest journal who we gave a nice sizable amount of money to. And we're going to flood these journals with those studies. You can't trust just studies. 
they're a good place to look to see if maybe somebody did found that same piece to the puzzle somebody that dug way deeper into the the deeper science behind how things work that may now that might be biased too and it might be biased in your favor it might be on your side of the puzzle your piece of the puzzle might be the same piece that motherfucker found but that doesn't give you the big picture you have to try things out you have to test them and there is a huge lack of testing on many issues where there's two types of things that are governing nutrition nowadays one is epidemiology does this little graph line coincide with the graph line for this food if it coincides like for example cancer and bacon if that number rises at the same time then cancer must cause bacon you know bacon must cause cancer that's not fucking scientific at all that makes you ask well maybe we need to take a closer look at bacon but at the same time motherfuckers were eating bacon they were eating other shit they were exposed to other things in their environment they were drinking glyphosate in their fucking water you know, I mean, there's all kinds of factors in this puzzle that many of us only have one little piece of. And as we communicate and we show our pieces to each other, that's how you start to paint a picture of what to try, what not to try. But then you got to take a, a whole realm of data that gets largely ignored by science, and that's the anecdotal d data. We live in a time where anyone can turn one of these fucking cameras on and put their results out on the internet, show their pictures, show their blood work, show their weigh-ins, show what they eat, t teach us things that they cook that fit into their piece of the puzzle. And we can go out there and we can look at all of that and see all of that and then make a informed decision on whether or not we want to try that we can personalize these things to fit the something that we can do the rest of our life and we're going to struggle we're going to fall on our ass we're going to fuck up i have fallen on my ass plenty on this journey i have done things that were the opposite of what i should be doing you know and it took a wake-up call and a drive in of stepping back from things um, you know, I quit drinking with the intention of occasionally drinking. And then I realized that when I reintroduced alcohol, I felt a lot worse than I previously did. I felt really bad. My body said, hey, motherfucker, um, I was happy that you got rid of that. So if you could go ahead and not fucking do that anymore, I'd be happy with you. And, you know, just move on. Same thing with sugar. Same thing with processed foods. I was a huge processed food advocate in the beginning. You know, I was like, oh, I'm going to eat my, I'm going to break my five day fast with a motherfucking Pop Tart. How you like that, motherfuckers? Take that, you organic bastards. You could go back and see how I shit all over organic diets and GMOs as being marketing terms. And they are. And I, you know, on the book I'm reading right now, and the link to this will be in the description because already this far into this book, it's only like a couple, I'm only a couple chapters in. I have been like, holy shit, this is a fucking awesome book. More people need to hear this. It's an audio book. Um, but Whitewashed, I'm reading right now, which is an, another glyphosate-based book. It's done by a reporter who was reporting agricult on the agriculture industry for years. She's been in Monsanto's office interviewing motherfuckers. Monsanto tried to bully her to stop her from publishing certain articles. Um while not being able to disprove any of the facts that she was laying out. Now, I don't have a big, you know, warm fuzzy for media nowadays, but this book is intriguing me, um, and it's telling a lot of the anecdotal evidence. She's interviewed people dying from cancer, farmers, who were just, like, walking around with glyphosate, running around like a fucking fire hose that the firemen dropped, and they're dying of fucking non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. There's lawsuits going on. There's all kinds of shit going on with this glyphosate shit. But it's, it's, I never saw that piece of the puzzle. It fits almost perfectly in the puzzle, by the way. From everything I've done so far, and it's only been a week of me looking into this, it, it's, it's had such a profound, you know, impact on how I look at things that I've, changing my diet as a result 
I'm pushing on with the carnivore experiment, which will reduce my exposure. I'm going organic, which will reduce my exposure. I'm going to be fasting here and there, which will reduce my exposure. I'm going to try to travel to some of the less polluted areas, which will reduce my exposure. Basically, I want to reduce my fucking exposure, all right? I even got to look in to see if this uh, plasticized water has glyphosate in it and see where Maine sits. Because I've actually been where they bottle this and, and they make this um, as a truck driver. So And I know it's in the middle of fucking nowhere, so I kind of want to know how much glyphosate's being used there. Um, but I know that it's still in the rain clouds and all of that shit, too, so that really kind of doesn't matter. But it might lower my exposure. I want to lower my exposure. And then I'm going to start testing myself periodically after I've done all of this to see where I stand in the grand scheme of things. Um, but they're finding it in piss and breast milk that you feed your children right when they're born. Yeah, I'm thinking that's probably a bad policy. But had it not been for me not just you know saying, okay, I did this, it worked, and then not, never looking further beyond i've always wanted you know to understand why shit works too um so when fasting worked i wanted to know why so i set out i thousands of hours of research on fasting under my belt at this point i wanted to know every little nugget of why this worked everything i could consume about fasting i did and that included some people pieces of the puzzle that were hammered in and then they inclu included pieces of the puzzle that fit perfectly you could almost just like drop them from the air and they would magically fall into the spot that was there in the puzzle for them and you know but if you just focus on that l your little piece and you don't look around the big picture you can get locked into to something and maybe even miss out on additional benefits. Uh, like the whole mood thing, that became apparent to me when it didn't become apparent to me until I cut the cheat days, I cut the sugar, I cut the alcohol, and then I started to realize, look, motherfucker, look at your mood. Look, remember all these fucking soul-crushing depressions you were having? where you couldn't get out of bed, where you would just sometimes cry for no fucking apparent reason to where you wanted to die. There's been times in my life, not proud of it. And, you know, I, now that I've stepped back and realized, whoa, wait a minute, I, I got so used to feeling that way that that was normal. But now that I'm not feeling that way all the time, I had the aha moment of, wait a minute, I'm not like that anymore. So the things I'm doing, and I can't just say that it was the one, one piece or another piece because I didn't realize it until I had already put multiple pieces into the puzzle. And, you know, and what triggered this is I, I was like... Um, in an art, I don't want to call out this YouTuber because I kind of, I partially approve of some of the things he does. I just don't like some of the marketing. But um, I, did, I did like a minor comment battle on YouTube recently with somebody who was trying to, well, you're going to find him anyway. It was somebody that was debunking fructose. Um, so, and it triggered me a little bit. So I got in the comments and, and bitched a little. Um, but at the same time, there's other videos of his that I do think or he's he's focused on his little piece of the puzzle plus he's marketing a supplement industry so he's got a bias built in right there he's not going to tell you anything that doesn't promote his supplements um but he was preaching the eat less move more and that we're all fat because we eat too much and versus the fructose and all these other factors all these other pieces of the puzzle that are clear as day now that i've done this um he hasn't seen those yet because he's all focused on his little piece of his puzzle. Um, and that's, I see it all the time now, that kind of, of bias, that kind of closed-mindedness. Um, and I tend to shy away from people even in the keto community that do that or people that, you know, are doing these things and they're, they're kind of not giving you the big picture. They're giving you their piece of the puzzle that they dove into and focused exclusively on and we got to move beyond that we got to try and and experiment 
with some different ideas. First, do the research. Read those biased studies. They do have some facts in them. They don't contain all the facts. They never will. Our science has been f bastardized just as much by industry as our media has. You gotta think, who pays scientists? Are they gonna shit where they eat? And every single time a scientist shits on one of these big corporations, they have their careers ruined, they have their fucking papers filed to the bottom of the pile, they get removed from journals, and if all of that is going on in the, around those studies, and some of them you have to pay like 80 bucks to, just to read the rest of it, you get the abstract, but if you want to dig into it, you have to pay. Um, it, it's all, when you, whenever you're introducing the big sweet dollar into an equation like that, to where that person has a vested interest in their science selling their product, that you cannot take that as a piece of the puzzle. You have to find the indicators that have no interest in that. And that's why I lean so heavily on anecdotal data. On your guy, you all telling me your stories, showing me the pictures, telling me about your blood numbers, telling me about all of these things you have done, how you have felt, how you have re gotten off your medication. I put the most stock in that because you generally don't have a reason to bullshit anybody you are sitting here telling me look i tried this i did that this way it didn't work i did it that way it didn't work I did it this way it worked that's the what i base the most of my decision on before i try something new i'm getting a lot of carnivore shit right now i'm getting a lot of people telling me look i got rid of the vegetables out of the keto diet all plant-based shit went away except maybe some coffee um, and an argument can may be made for, for or against coffee, um, core organic. I'm, I'm about to make the switch there too, um, as soon as I find one. Uh, you know, it's it's a, it's about figuring out these things based largely on that. And the, well, some of the doctors that I put the most stock in have thousands of clinical patients that they can not only hear their story but observe their numbers directly observe their weight loss observe how they are pulling themselves off of diabetes medication so when someone has that level of data and that level of knowledge of a a, a crowd that has no other interest other than being healthy when you are listening to someone tell you how they got better, they're not telling you that because they want to sell you something. They're telling you that because they got better and they want you to get better. They want you to stop these things. Maybe listen more to them instead of the, I'm going to take my shirt off and show you my fucking abs, motherfuckers. Not to say there aren't a few of those that might be telling you something in, you know your best interests instead of their own. I listen to the 65-year-old who's been fucked up for the past 10 years that is like 300 pounds, needs to come down on all kinds of medication, all kinds of fucked up, and then that motherfucker does a lot of these things and it teaches me that it works. It tells me, look, here's somebody who is more fucked up than I was unfucked themselves and here we are and that person is only just telling me because they're happy with their own results on something they tried so it made me want to try it that's why i've been fucking with keto for so long because i get these stories i get these pictures i see results and now that I've confirmed in myself, because there was always that little question mark, what's my blood work going to look like? Now that I've got those results, along with hitting my goal, along with a 34-inch measurement around my belly, which could probably lose a few more inches if I wanted to be that take-my-shirt-off motherfucker that everybody likes. Um, you know, it's 
it's after seeing the results myself, and it's one of the biggest reasons I'm so passionate. So that I, I get so triggered when someone comes in and tries to tell me, look, science says you're wrong. Science says you're wrong when, oh, well, motherfucker, I've been living this shit. Did science lose my weight for fucking three years straight without a significant regain? The most I ever regained was 15 pounds, and I was eating the standard American diet. It was elimination. You know, oh, I eliminate standard American diet, my weight goes down. I eat the shit, the weight goes up. This is not very hard science to do. Doesn't require a randomized fucking controlled trial. It's very easy to figure out what does what to you by removing it for a while. What happens? Bring it back. What happens? Holy shit, I can't eat that shit. It's really that simple. I've done it with fruit. I've done it with veg. I know exactly what happens when I eat those things. I know that veg and fruit does not satiate me, does not get rid of my hunger. I know I could count the calories of that shit and probably not regain the weight, but I probably would not be getting a lot of the health benefits I have experienced, especially with the compromise of our industrialized fucking fruit and our chemically farmed vegetables. You know, there's just so much, there's so much more to the puzzle than I even have access to. So, which is why we can't ever really stop learning this stuff. We can't ever stop asking these questions of, of looking and researching. So... You know, before you put too much stock in one study or another study or, you know, you got to look at the big pictures. Those studies, they're compromised. You can't base all of your decisions off of just them. You also got to look at people that have done it. You also got to look at how they did it. Um, you also got to look at, is it in their best interest to share it with you? I put a lot more stock into the random person that, you know, has maybe 100 fucking subscribers on their channel that gets maybe 20 views for video, and they post their entire weight loss journey on there. I put a lot more stock in those than the, I'm going to take my shirt off, motherfuckers. Oh, by the way, try my new supplement. Those fuckers I don't trust as much as the, the, the person that looks like a real motherfucker that really did this shit and had these results and they're not perfect they're not i'm gonna take my shirt off and show you that because most of the times those these people they take their shirt off they have loose skin and some of them are very brave to show their massive amounts of loose skin and i applaud them for that i would do it too i'm not too bad at the loose skin but I didn't experience the level of damage that some of these people whose videos I've watched have experienced. And if it wasn't for them, I base my decision heavily weighted on, so to speak, on those videos that don't garner a lot of attention. They're not looking to be YouTubers. They just wanted to share their journey. They just wanted to help people. Which is how my channel evolved. You know, I wanted to be a YouTuber. But I wanted to make trucking vlogs. And then I stumbled into this. I started out on a completely different idea for my YouTube videos. And I came across this and I'm like, this is too important to not focus on. And when I started focusing on it, the channel started to grow. So I knew I was on the right track. I knew there was a lot of people that are going to need this help, that are going to need coaching, that are going to need people saying, hey, what's wrong with this fucking picture? Let's go out and find out together what's wrong with this fucking picture. And we've been doing that very effectively. I love my YouTube community right now. I get so much feedback. I get asked the tough questions. I get asked the easy questions. Occasionally a vegan comes in and tells me to go fuck myself, which is always helpful and tells me how ugly I am. And, you know, I'm a truck driver. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. You say fuck too much. You know, there's always those people that have absolutely no contribution to our collective community. Um, and But there's a lot of people, and it's more positive than negative, that are helping not only me, on my journey to be aware of health, but are helping 
each other. I'm starting to see more interplay in the comments between each other. You guys are starting to get in, get to know each other, to hang out on the live chat and bullshitting while I'm going off on one of my fucking rants. So that, you know, that's what we're doing. We are collectively showing our personal pieces of the puzzle to each other and making our decisions based most heavily on that. I'm not saying never read studies. I'm not saying don't listen to the take your shirt off motherfuckers. Um, I'm just saying give them the appropriate amount of your judgment. Don't weigh heavily on sources that have some kind of financial interest or disinterest in certain things um, so that they won't show you the pieces of the puzzle that don't fit their money puzzle. Because the money puzzle is a completely different picture than the health puzzle. And a lot of these studies are trying to fit a money puzzle. You know, there's some interest in from someone in them proving something. And it isn't our health that they're trying to prove. A lot of them are trying to try and get a drug funded. They're trying to get approval from government regulators on certain things. They're trying to determine, you know, if a new product is toxic or not. You know, they're trying to cover their ass so that later on down the line they don't get sued like Monsanto is right now. Um, it's, you know, it, it, there's a lot of money in the money picture and... There's not a lot of health in the money picture, and that encompasses academia and studies as well. And universities are also businesses, by the way. They also have donators or contributors or people building new buildings for them. Uh, you know, there's a lot of bias in science now. And now that they know that we're looking, they know we're reading these studies, they know we're kind of keeping an eye or thumb on the pulse of it they're going to take advantage of that the people with the money are going to take advantage of that because they want to make more money and they're trying to stay a step ahead of you know joe schmo fucking truck driver who's started a youtube channel telling people that they're trying to make money and we're getting sick you know so that that's kind of my spiel for today um tomorrow um probably around 4 p.m. tomorrow I'm gonna do a live stream kind of talk about this a little bit maybe go over some comments that triggered me here and there and uh, go through and chat with you guys tomorrow so look forward to that about 4 p.m. Eastern time um, and that's where I'm at but what the fuck do I know and you shouldn't just listen to my little piece of the puzzle you need to get your pieces all together and Find the other pieces, and not every source of information is unbiased or, you know, but what you got to start to do is pick out the commonalities and the, the things that people are saying that are in common the most and, and, and take into account way heavily on the data, even if it's anecdotal, of people that, which it does have its own level of bias because people don't like to be wrong, um, but weigh heavily on people that don't have a financial interest in being right. Um, I have been wrong plenty of times on this channel. And I have no bones of telling you that if you go back a couple of years, I was probably, I would take a shit on my old videos. All right. I'm not the end all be all. It's why I say it in every video. I'm not a fucking expert. I'm just a fucking asshole. All right. And that is probably going to be in every video from now on, even if I became a PhD with a fucking endocrinology degree and some biochemistry shit on my resume. I would still not declare myself an expert in this. I have my pieces of the puzzle. You have your pieces of the puzzle. The Take your shirt off in front of every video. Motherfuckers have pieces of their puzzle. And we can use each other's pieces to, to see if they fit or not by testing them and figure out what our picture is going to look like. And some people's pictures are different than others. So that's the other thing to take into account. So please like and subscribe. If you want me to make more motherfucking videos. And I'll make more motherfucking videos. And shit. Also, 
If you found this video helpful and you want to help contribute to the channel and keep this thing going and keep me pumping out at least five videos a week, which is what I'm trying to do. I'm not committed, by the way. If I need the time off, I'm going to take the time off. Um, and there's going to become occasions when I'm just so busy elsewhere, I can't, I it was barely able to get this video out today. Um, but you want me to be able to survive while making videos and make continue to do this? Um, go ahead and visit scottthetruckdriver.com, throw a tip in the tip jar, and you'll help me continue to be able to put out as you know a lot of videos versus you know one video a week, which is about what I would do if I didn't make any money on YouTube. Um, so there's that. Um, also on scottthetruckdriver.com, I have the recommended products page that I still haven't updated recently, but it's got a lot of good stuff in there. So check that out. That helps the channel at no extra cost to you. Share the shit with your friends. Hit the little bell icon so you know mate might find out when I post some new shit. Um, because you know what? There's been some flaws with that lately. Um, and... I'll keep doing this shit. If you guys still want me to do it, I'll keep doing it. As long as you guys want me to do it. You know? There might come a time where you guys were like, okay, I'm done with this motherfucker. I understand that. I'm going to keep doing this. Even if I only got like two views per video, I probably would still do this and hope that I get through it. Because even just helping one person is kind of satisfying to me. But you guys have let me know I've helped a hell of a lot more people than that. Um, and I'm going to keep trying to do that. You guys are definitely, you know, keeping me going. Um, not just from the financial contributions, which some of you have been overly generous, generous with, but you keep me going with your inspirations, your inspirational stories, your experiences, the things that you self experiment and try, um, that have led me to other avenues of questions that I want to answer for myself, which is why I'm doing the carnivore experiment, by the way. Um, not there yet. Don't get excited, all you carnivores that are just like, oh, wait till, wait till he does this fucking carnivore shit. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's gonna get rid of the veg. I've drastically already cut veg. Um, there's just some things that are sticking with me that I can't, you know, the coffee's not going anywhere, so just hang that up. If that's a requirement for being a carnivore, I'll never be a fucking carnivore. Um, and the dark chocolate, I haven't been giving that up. Um, I haven't eaten this in a while. Um, and I love this. This is a hard one. So there's that, um, and, you know, there's some artificial sweetener in my life that's probably not going to go away because I like putting that in my coffee. I like putting that on my 100% um, Baker's chocolate. Um, those are big staples in my food as far as they keep me from wanting cake and cookies and all of that shit. Um, I am trying to get rid of a lot of parts of my diet. The other thing I'm struggling with is the... Um, low carb pizza sauce I use, which is an organic. I've, I, I looked, um, and I want to go organic. I want to be, if I do carnivore, it's going to be organic carnivore. I want the best of the best. I want a, a good baseline that I can maybe experimentally add some of the foods that I really like in to see what happens. So I want to go to a baseline carnivore level and then occasionally put in foods. And Amber O'Hearn, who's a huge carnivore ad advocate, um, especially from the mood disorder perspective, um, she does that. She's done that. She'll throw in little things here and there to see what happens. So that's what we can do. I just realized I went on a whole nother fucking thing when I was supposed to end this video. So I'm sorry. Sorry. This is how I work. Have a nice motherfucking day and shit see you tomorrow and and to you people with ocd i'm i'm sorry <laughs> i just realized i forgot to take the knot out of this fucking thing i kind of like it i want to keep it <laughs>